So what we want to do is give you an overview, kind of a, an orientation to Startup Weekend and what's going to be happening, and give you some tools that will be useful for the weekend and answer any questions that you have. Um, and then also set you up for completing this uh, short course, which you can be all done by the end of next week. Have two of your credit hours completely out of the way uh, by the end of next week, which would be a nice thing. Um, my name is Brad Barbeau. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an associate professor over in the College of Business. Uh, Eric Dow. Good afternoon. Eric Dow. A faculty and chair of a uh, new name, School of Computing and Design. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you, you received that press release soon. <laughs> I tried to explain that to Babita and a couple of other uh, college of business folks yesterday, and they were so confused. <laughs> School of Computing and Design. Yes, that's right. Um, and uh, Mary Jo Zenk, the, the, th the, the three of us are the Institute for Innovation and Economic Development. I'm the executive director, Eric is the director, and Mary Jo Zank is the program director, so it's we're, we're lots of directors. And our right-hand person, Kyle. What's your last name, Kyle? Lapierre. 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 Sorry, I don't remember a French last name. <laughs> um, did everybody get the, the paperwork from Kyle to fill out for registration? That will save you a little bit of time on Friday and save also us some craziness on Friday with having so many people to register. So how I want to proceed is I'm going to go to the website uh, and pull up the schedule. And uh, Mary Jo will take you through the schedule so you get a sense of, of how the weekend is going to go on a scheduling standpoint. Um, I, there, everybody should have copies of the overheads, in addition to the uh, um, sheets to fill out from Kyle, I've got copies of the overheads and copies of uh, some startup tools that we'll go over also. Oh, okay. Right. So uh, this the website and everything. The URL is startupweekendmb. dot co, not dot com. Just co. dot co. And um, uh, startup weekends um, basically use the same format everywhere that they're that they're happening. There will be uh, fourteen other. Startup weekends going on around the world uh, the same weekend. It's kind of cool. Uh, we have a facilitator that's coming down from startupweekend.org that's going to, you know, help us do it. Um, it's a lot of fun. So uh, four o'clock on Friday, four o'clock is registration. You guys are doing this now, so you can uh, come later, like about between four thirty, quarter of five. Pick up your. Um, name tag and start to meet some of the folks. We'll have a short orientation um, and then we'll have dinner and networking. Okay, and so part of uh, networking is starting to meet some other people. There will be people from the community. I know there's uh, a couple people from other colleges that are attending um, and uh, some would-be entrepreneurs that have their the next big twi Twitter idea, I think. Um, but we will have dinner Friday night um, and uh, lots of coffee and tea all weekend. And uh, so you'll have enough caffeine to keep you going. Um, then there will be a, um, let's see, we're not going to have any speakers. So we will um, start working on this. Um, our facilitator is going to do some practice exercises. So you're going to get used to pitching. Um, if you have an idea, 
you get 60 seconds to pitch a business idea. It can be a crazy idea. Just, you know, people, people will pitch ideas like, um, there was one that I heard, they liked bird call, they, they do bird watching, and so yeah. they wanted an app to help them figure out what the bird's bird was that was chirping. So they did that. There were some that helped local rest, uh, local artists uh, find, um, sell things through, you know, they, they display it in their, they display art at different restaurants and stuff like this. So whatever kind of crazy idea you might have, um, pitch it, but you only have 60 seconds, okay? So usually there's about half of the people pitch an idea, maybe sometimes more, some people pitch more than one idea. Then everybody gets to vote. You get three, um, three little post-it notes um, to vote and your favorite ideas. And then we take the top 10 to 15 ideas and we try to find, and then you guys kind of form teams around those ideas. So even if your idea doesn't get picked, you have a chance to participate in another startup team. So the, the, the goal is, is to learn the process, not necessarily to have your idea um, survive the thing but to learn the whole, the whole weekend process. So, um, so Friday, Friday evening we start working and you're there till basically 11 when the building closes, okay? Then on Saturday, the buildings open at 8 a.m. Can we push Saturdays? Yep. And we'll have coffee and a continental breakfast available for you. Um, there'll be a couple, uh, there'll be a, like a check-in so all the teams will kind of get together and you kind of check in as far as what skill sets, what um, maybe coaching help you're gonna need. Um, and uh, then we're gonna be sending coaches around in the afternoon to kind of give you guys some advice and some help. There'll be lunch at noon. Uh, the coaches come in the afternoon. We'll have a couple of mini workshops here and there. Um, maybe a couple people from the team might wanna join the workshop and others will be working on it. Saturday, your focus is your marketing idea, right? Testing your market. Yeah, yeah. And then- And, um, and building a prototype. And building a prototype. And then um, you're basically working, you can go out into the community and um, test your market. We had people go down to Del Monte um, Mall um, and test their, you know, did a, did a quick survey with people surveying online, checking with their friends, that sort of thing. Um, going around campus, trying to get some sense of whether or not people, if you build it, anybody are gonna buy it. And you may be changing your idea a little bit to make it more marketable. Um, and the coaches will be there to help you with that. And again, you have until 11 to continue working as a team. We're, we will practice pitches around nine that's what we're gonna try to do. Um, and then Sunday, again, the doors open at eight. Or, um, and we'll have a, oh, and you'll have lunch and dinner here. At, everything's gonna be at the University Center, so. Um, lunch and dinner, breakfast, lunch and dinner on Sunday as well. Um, we'll start the same way on Sunday, but Sunday's focus is you're gonna work, your teams are gonna work on trying to get your pitch for the judges. And um, Brad will explain that a little bit more. And then we'll have um, the, the presentations will be at five. You'll have a opportunity to uh, do a tech check for your presentations around three. Um, we'll take team photos. We're gonna have a party celebration after all of the, um, the judging and the awards. Okay, and, and it's not, the judges are gonna give you guys feedback, not necessarily um, to, to like what you need to do to continue, um, your teams to continue as far as that. And, and the awards, um, they're, 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 not, they're not supposed to be cash awards, but uh, we'll basically be giving some services to kind of help the teams continue. And there's beer at the end. And there's beer at the end. Right. Beer at the end. Bring Very your important. ID. <laughs> oh, I have an attendance sheet. 
I want to ask you guys, oh, cool. be sure to yeah. sign in each day. So I'm going to pass this around for today's attendance. So just initial next to your name. If your name's not on there, please add it and make sure that you're registered for the course, okay? Anybody have any questions about kind of the, the order of things and how it goes? So what time do they need to be there on Friday? If they're registered, what they're time registered, do they need to be there? They're um, registered before 5 if you want to go to orientation, but you're basically doing the orientation now. So between 5 and 5.30. Dinner's at 5.30, so. Don't miss dinner. So yeah, 5, 5.30, dinner, networking, get to know people, et cetera. Um, any other questions about the weekend itself? Yeah. Where's the action on the all, It's all at the University Center. Everything is happening for us at the University Center. Yep, Emily? Any sorts of dresses you can find in? Or Comfortable. I, suits and ties. Come on. I expect at least four inch heels and I'm going to measure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely casual. This is comfortable, folks. You know, sweatshirts. The whole bit. I will not look like this on the weekend. Trust me. Um, and Eric will. Well, you're liable. To, actually, the two of us have to do. We have to, other things. We have another things. group. We actually have a Chinese uh, delegation group that's joining us for dinner and to watch the judging on Sunday night. And I have to do a presentation to them. So. And, 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 and that's part of the, the the process. We try not not only to run a startup weekend. We are thinking about probably sometime in the future to have a fund that from in the domestic in, uh, investor, uh, international investor, and the fund we will designate part of that to fund our student startup. So we try so so when you talk to them, pretend you are now. No. <laughs> Show you are enthusiastic and you are really believe in your project. Well, and Sundays the presentation um, that's open to the community. So if you have people that you really want to see you do this thing or um, you know, invite them. They're, if they want to join us for dinner, they can get, the, the, they can get a ticket online. Um, if they come after dinner, they can just come. Yeah, bring family and friends. Let's make it a party. There's plenty of beer, yep. Yeah. I charge for consulting time. <laughs> <laughs> No, the food and everything is provided. Okay. I was yeah. in family and friends, if they come for dinner, I think there is a twenty five dollars. Okay. Yeah. Oh, for, for dinner. dinner. Oh, for, right. for, for all of you, because you are student and you register this class, everything is free. Okay. Um, the other thing, if you do have guests come Sunday <laughs> night or at any point on, on the weekend, make sure they get parking permits. And they'll they'll probably even be able to get parking on Sunday. Oh yeah, if you're bringing your car, make sure you have your parking permit. Okay. So um, let me go through a little bit and, and uh, add some background and some color to this. Um, this is a course, but it's mostly a course about doing, right? It's jumping in there and, and learning totally by doing. But we're going to give you some things to think about and some tools to, to use in the weekend that will be useful in the weekend. Um, and we'll be asking you, as part of the course, separate from the weekend, to go back and, and reflect on what went on in the weekend. So you want to you have sort of a part of your brain reflecting on what's going on as you're doing it. Uh, so you're kind of taking some mental notes. So, in terms of learning in Startup Weekend, it really is learning by doing. So you want to kind of pay attention to the process. What's going on for you? What's going on for your team as you go through this? Uh, you're going to be learning from your teammates. Your teammates are going to be other students. Your teammates will be community people. Uh, one of the things I really like about this event is that it's an opportunity for students and regular people, community people, to work together side by side. Um, so I encourage you, when you form your teams, to try to get a mixed team. Um, there's a tendency for students to you know, gravitate to students and community members to gravitate to community members, but the more we can mix that up, the richer the experience is going to be. You bring things they won't have, they bring things you won't have, they maybe bring some 
more uh, outside experience, life experience. You bring uh, a learning and technical side that, that they may not have, so lots of learning there. There also will be mentors coming through. We have how many coaches approximately? Probably like 12, 15. Who will be coming through you know, for a couple hours each on Saturday and on Sunday. Um, and will we do sign-ups for those? Like we... I'm, I'm going to try, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> sign-ups as in if your team is looking for a coach, we'll have a place where you can sign up to, to get a coach in. Uh, and these are experienced entrepreneurs. There's some faculty members. There are um, business executives, uh, lawyers, etc. So lots of different people who can help you through the process as you go. Um, but most of all, have fun, build something, change the world. Probably won't get rich on the weekend. Uh, usually that's have fun, uh, have fun, get rich, have fun, change the world. But Eh, not this weekend, you're probably not going to get rich. So you're going to you're going to be starting into an entrepreneurial venture. You're going to be starting with an idea that's probably not going to be a very well-formed idea. The person who came up with it is going to think, well, I've got this idea perfectly laid out. No idea is as perfectly laid out as people think it's going to be. And your job is going to be to design a process with your team that gets the information you need to push that idea as far forward as you can within the 54 hours. So this is about exploring and discovering um, uh, in lots of little quick learning cycles. And I'll talk about those in a moment. I saw this set of innovation principles presented by a guy uh, a few months ago, and I thought, wow, he's really captured this well. Um, what's innovation about? First of all, be bold. Don't be consistent. It's not a weekend to be conservative and safe. Don't do the safe thing. Do the big, bold thing. You'll learn a lot more of that later. Get out. On Saturday, we're going to specifically say, get out of here. Out of the room. Go talk to people. Go talk to the market. Right? That's the, the market testing, if you will. Um, think wrong. Do it wrong. Come up with screwball ideas that clearly couldn't work and then find the gold that's in those ideas. Make stuff. Hopefully you'll have some people on your team who can actually um, write code, if code's appropriate, or what, so that you're actually creating. Um, uh, you're really doing two parallel processes. One is you're creating a prototype for, for the product, service, whatever that you're doing. And the other side is you're creating a plan, a plan, I don't want to use that word. <laughs> you're creating a model for the business that you would build around that product. Um, so you're going to make stuff that's small, uh, that's not so relevant to this. You're not going to make any big bets on the weekend because you're not going to be betting a lot on the weekend. Uh, but move fast. Uh, speed, speed doesn't kill here. Speed makes things work. I'm actually going to jump over this piece. By the way, there we go. Um, just a couple things I want to say. So <clears throat> you may or may not, when you're all done with this, become an entrepreneur in a sort of traditional go out, start your own business kind of way. But you can apply the same kinds of principles and, and activities that you're doing this weekend can apply wherever you end up working, whatever environment you're in, to be entrepreneurial. And whether you end up in a nonprofit uh, or other kind of social venture, or whether you're in a big company and you're doing what we call entrepreneurship. But, but entrepreneurship is a practice. It's a set of skills that can be learned. And you will learn some of those skills through going, going through this this weekend. Learning is what it's all about. So, so far when I've said learning, I've been talking about your learning about you know, entrepreneurship and how it works. But learning is really what entrepreneurship, what happens in entrepreneurship. You're trying to learn as fast as you can. You start with a, a, some kind of an idea about where you think there's a need and how you could fulfill that need. And then the job is to learn as fast as you can how to develop that uh, into a finely tuned uh, business plan. 
So you're going to go through a set of learning cycles that start with building something and then measuring how it works. Okay, and the designer people will be going through one version of this and the business people will be going through another version of this. Out of measuring how it works, you learn what's working and what's not working and you rebuild, you build another and go through another learning cycle. Another way to put this is you create a set of experiments. These computers are all really slow. Um, you design some metrics to measure whether those experiments work or not to test your assumptions. So when you go out and talk to customers, dumbest, dumbest uh, market research you can do is say, hey, we're starting a business and we're gonna, we're gonna create these really nifty cups and would you like to buy one of my cups? That's, you're gonna learn almost nothing from that other than whether they like you or not. If they like you, they'll say, sure, I'd buy that. And if they don't like you, they'd say, no, I wouldn't buy that. And, all, and you haven't learned anything about the product at all. But what you want to do is ask yourself, well, why are we making it this way? What is it that we think is true out there such that we're making this cup white? And then you want to test that assumption. Well, we think people think that drinks taste better when they're in white cups. That would be a more useful thing to find out from people uh, than would you buy my product? So you want, that's what you're doing is testing assumptions and then creating an experiment, new experiments to test your new set of assumptions. And these learning cycles need to go as fast as possible so that you, you're not trying to learn everything. Don't design a survey. Now you don't want to go out and do a big long survey like we learned in market research, in market research. No, you, you were, who did I have? No, you were in market, market research, you were in entrepreneurship like we did in, in, in market research, you design a big long survey, that's not gonna get you what you need. You need to find the one or two key questions you wanna ask of potential customers or other key people and, and focus on those. Learn one thing or a couple things at a time. Go back, revise, and then go back out and learn the next thing. Don't worry about innovation economy. There's a couple things. Okay, there we go. When you're developing what your idea is, here's a really useful term called monetizable pain. You're not looking for a product that it would be nice for people to have. They're not gonna pay anything for it. You're looking for something that's a big enough problem for your customers that they'd be willing to pay real money. Uh, if you want to win, win this weekend, manage to actually sell some stuff to people. Get them to pull out their credit card right? and actually uh, take, take down their credit card number and, and uh, uh, make some sales. Not that I'm expecting actual sales to happen. It could, but if you want to be thinking at that level, that people would really be willing to put out money for this. That's what we mean by monetizable pain as opposed to yeah, there's a need out there, but you know, will, pay, will people pay for it? One of the places you're going to start with is creating a value proposition. What's the value you're going to create for customers? So, especially the business side folks, you really need to get this one clear and concise. Typically when people are starting with these, they, they're, they've got this big idea and it's gonna have all these 42 different features on it and it's gonna come in 32 different sizes and no, 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 no. You wanna get this down to something really clear and really simple. What's the value you're creating for people? What's the value proposition for PayPal? What does PayPal provide in value to its customers? They've been incredibly Secure. successful. Secure, safe way to pay online. Mostly online. They're starting to move offline, but mostly online. Okay, that's succinct. Nicely put. 
What about Facebook? What's the value proposition for Facebook? Or a value proposition. Connect people. Connect people. Okay. Probably add a little bit to that to fill it out. But simple, clear, uh, what are people going to want? Uh, in the handout, everybody got the handout of the slides. The last page there. The Has everybody signed in? Has a the business model canvas on it, and one side has this writing in it, and the other side. Canvas is a really useful tool, and we're going to have some big ones of these available. Is that correct? Yes. Um, that we'll hand out on, on the weekend. So big ones that you can fill in. Uh, this is my <clears throat> canvas. Starts with the value proposition right in the middle. Nice clear statement of what's the value you're going to you're going to create for people. Then. Who are you going to create this value for? Who are the customer segments that you're going to be targeting? How are you going to create relationships with them? Not how are you going to advertise to them? Anybody comes up with an advertising idea? No, nah, it's not going to be I mean, that, that how we're going to build this business is we're going to do it through advertising. Yeah. Almost certainly not. Not at the stage your business is, is in. You need to be thinking about how are we going to get our first customer? How are we going to get our first 10 customers? And you don't get those through advertising. Channels, how are we going to, how are we going to get product to people? Uh, or location, where are we going to be located if you have a location-based business? So that's the marketing side of the, of the um, business model of Canvas. Then on the operations side, who are the key partners we have to have? Who is it that we need to partner with in order to be able to create the value in our value proposition? What are the key activities that our company needs to be involved in, uh, needs to be doing in order to deliver the value proposition? And what key resources do we need in order to get this business started? And then, in the bottom here, out of doing this work, what are the revenue streams we're going to generate that's a critical question. That's a really critical question. Like, so how are we going to generate revenue with this? What, what are we going to be charging people for? How are they going to be paying us? And then on the, from the operations side, what's the cost structure? If you are doing activities, it's going to cost you money to do those activities. So what's our cost structure going to look like? When you do this, given the timing of the weekend, I would focus more strongly on the revenue streams than on worrying about the details of the cost structure. Rough out the cost structure, but really get the revenue side uh, as, as strong as you can. When you fill it out, I just went through it in about the order that I usually think about roughing out a business model canvas. Start with the value proposition, then go to the customer segments, then fill in the customer relationships, the channels, so you know what value you're providing, who you're providing it to, how you're going to capture them, how you're going to get it to them, and then next worry about the operation side. Oh, the computer says, there we go. Um, I don't have a particular order that I think these should happen in. And you don't have to go to this by this order exactly. It's just a suggestion. Re whoops, revenue streams. Once you finish the marketing side, you should know what your revenue streams are going to be. Then you can go to the operations side and finally to the cost structure once you understand your operation plan. When you build your product on this weekend, your job isn't going to be to fine tune it and know exactly how many knobs it's going to have. Your job is to come up with uh, what we call the minimum viable product. That is, what is the smallest feature set? 
that will deliver the value proposition. What's the simplest version of this that will deliver the value proposition? If you try to fine tune it, you'll spend way too much time worrying about whether the knob should be on the left or the right, which makes almost no difference to the basic value proposition. That's, for some, that's way down the road if you worry about whether the, the thing should come in black, green, or red. You, what, what's your minimum viable product? Okay, I'm not going to worry about homework yet. I want to go to the other handout, um, which is the tools. There's a handout. There's probably a whole bunch of people on that. Can you send that copy around? It says, well, welcome to Startup Weekend on. By the way, all of this information is available on the iLearn site for this course. Um, and actually, while that's going around, let me read one other item. I do want to mention that um, to, uh, Mary Jo made, made reference to that there are going to be 14 other startup weekends happening at the same, on this weekend that we're doing this. And we didn't pick it because if you pick any weekend during the year, there's going to be 14 of these things happening literally around the world. They happen all over the world. Um, the first one, we, we, we had a little quasi competition going with. Uh, San Luis Obispo it was a Twitter hash war. A Twitter war, and we won it, right? Yes, Hands down. Yeah. Big time. Beat the bejeebers out of uh, San Luis Obispo. What's the closest one that's happened? Do you know? Seattle. Seattle? Okay, so nothing, nothing yeah. right, right so close. Um, so this is a worldwide thing that has caught on. I don't know how many people have been through startup weekends. Um, but there are several thousand that happen in any given year, right? I, I think they've had like, they've created 130,000 entrepreneurs, basically. Anybody who's gone through this, they say, you're an entrepreneur now. <laughs> so 130,000 people have, have participated. Many people have participated in many startup weekends. We've got a startup weekend junkie coming that signed up recently, um, just because the things are so fun. Um, there are, is some major support out there. Kauffman Foundation, which is a major supporter of entrepreneurship uh, uh, from the research and, and helping entrepreneurs. Um, Amazon Web Service, Microsoft, Google, of course, uh, DuckCo, and even Coca-Cola. Although Coke, Coke and entrepreneurship, I don't, I don't know how well those fit. They're, they're trying to explore the developing countries. They gave up on us. They yeah. only support the developing countries. <laughs> so when you put your teams together, right, there's a tendency for teams to sort of form and say, hey, you want to work with me? Okay, let's work together. But you might want to think about what do you need, what skills do you need on your teams? Um, depending what the idea is, specific idea is, you may need more or less of, of individuals of these, but you need some people who can actually build stuff. Whether they're so whether it's software or hardware or whatever, you need people who can build stuff. You need people who can design stuff, which might be you or it might be somebody else. I'm not suggesting you know, who you are. You should think about, well, where's your strength in here also? We, you need people who understand the business side, especially 
uh, where teams tend to be weak um, uh, from past experience is on the financial side. So um, try to have a, fin a financial person uh, on there will help you. And then administrators, although I'm not, not sure necessarily how much you have to worry about finding an administrator. Are you an administrative type? Right. Probably not a lot of pure administrative types are going to be showing up at this weekend. This is not a, but you do need to manage your team, so you need to, you do need to think about that. Brad, uh, can yeah. I also suggest, Absolutely. make sure you have somebody who likes to talk um, because you're going to be making a presentation and um, Sometimes the person with the idea is not necessarily the best presenter. I'll Absolutely. leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, if you can find uh, somebody with a, a nifty Australian accent, <laughs> that, that really works, right? The t what, the first year, the team that won, right? Wasn't yeah. the, the woman with the Australian accent. She just charmed everybody with that great accent. So, uh, yeah, good point, and having uh, somebody who who can, who's comfortable presenting and can present with lots of, lots of energy. Um, question, Brad, there's a question. Oh, sorry, yes. I saw that finances was under administrator. So um, how do you feel about that considering that you had talked about it under the business section? Yeah, I guess I would think of it as being under the business side, but I think about finance people differently. Uh, maybe some people think about finance people as accountants. I don't yeah. think about finance people as strategy people. <laughs> I'm just curious because uh, yeah, I'm don't studying don't accounting. Pardon? I'm studying accounting, so that would be me. And That'd be great. For, you know, right. Where would you put me? Oh. Business or administrator or both? Oh, answer now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It, it doesn't have to be that precise. Yeah. Or yeah, it's, not, it's, it's not a very precise. Structure. It's kind of yeah. organized yeah. chaos. Think about uh, many uh, MBA degrees from management administration, the business administration. So administration and business, they are really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't get too accountant-like with thinking this through. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's there you go. Okay. That's and we'll, wear, we'll wear more than one hat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah, no doubt. Do I see another question? No? It also helps to have different skill sets so that you can divvy up responsibility. So you can have some people working on the marketing, some people working on the numbers, and some people working on the, the software or the, the, the website design or whatever. So when you get in here, so just to be clear, Friday, Friday night there's going to be pitches. How many of you right now think you'll be pitching on Friday night? You've got an idea to pitch. Okay, let's do, at least triple that number. I'd like to see lots of people have. Don't we have to pitch on Friday? You don't have to pitch on Friday. But if you've got an idea, get up there and pitch it. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? People politely clap and never <laughs> deal with your idea again. Get used to rejection. Yes. Yeah, that was, that's precisely why I say get used to rejection. You know, it is a part of life. It's certainly a part of being an entrepreneur. But don't miss the opportunity to get up there on the stage and, and stumble through, you know, whatever you've got to stumble through or get up there on stage and, and pitch something great. But, so, and then, so what's going to happen after that is everybody's going to go through a voting process. We're going to post flip charts all around the room with, with each idea or an idea on each flip chart, and people are going to go around with, how many post-its do they get? Three. Three. Everybody gets three post-its to put either one on your three favorite ideas or all three on your most favorite idea or whatever. So we go through this voting process, and, you know, if you don't get any votes, hey, they just didn't understand. They just weren't smart enough to know how good your idea was. Exactly. So then the most popular ideas will pick, what's the number? Well, it, it just kind of breaks out. It's like yeah. wherever the cut off. There's usually like a third of the ideas, like 10 to 15, get a lot of ideas, get a lot of votes, and then, so you just kind of and break it off. Down. And then we just kind of chaotically form teams around it. 
<laughs> so once we've got the ideas selected, all the other ones come down, and then team, then we go into the, the team formation process. So the uh, people that have the ideas are saying, I need to have somebody with, you know, software skills, or I need to have somebody that's really good with numbers, and, you know, I've got the development skills, you know, the, that sort of thing. So you, you start bartering back and forth. Okay, so with that process, then you don't include that as part of your pitch, because your pitch is just pitching your idea. So how do you mark it out, like, I need this person? Is that just through understanding of the After we've done the voting process, if your idea survives, then you'll go stand by your flip chart and say, hey, I need X. Okay. And you'll start working with people and, and you know, snagging people. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then once you get in your teams, it's brain dump time, right? You want to do some brainstorming, get ideas out. Uh, I would remember, I encourage you to remember that the creative process works. There's a cycle to it, and it always begins with going broad, get lots of ideas out there, and then find ways to narrow them down. The teams that succeed, that do the worst, are the teams that as soon as Doug puts the first part of his idea out there, everybody starts telling him why that's a really stupid idea. Those teams shut down really quickly. If you don't like Doug's idea, say, Doug, that's a great idea. Here's mine. Right? And get yours out. The teams that work best are the teams where you heard Doug's idea, and it was okay, but there was one piece of it that you thought, so you grab that and you build on that. Okay? <coughs> Let me build on Doug's idea and take it here. Those are the teams that get a head of steam behind them. They start building on each other's ideas. So broad, and then you've got to narrow it down okay, as you go forward. And I'll, I'll talk about uh, a couple ways to do that. So that's the prioritize and refine stage in the whole thing. And then you do need to think about what tasks do we need to be doing and who's going to be doing them. You can create, in the tools thing here, they suggest um, actually using some post-it notes, uh, get a, a piece of flip chart paper and create a schedule for yourselves. Not a bad idea. Yeah. We usually try to keep them no more than six, but there's no technical limit. We had some as small as two. So. Two, two is tricky because there's an awful lot of work to do for two. You want probably five, six people. You don't have to worry about the usual student problem of scheduling. Look, everybody's going to be there the whole weekend. Right? So the scheduling issue goes, goes away. What you need are bodies who can, you go talk to customers, you go do some coding, you do some designing, you know, so that you can divide things up. There's a lot to do in 54 hours. Some team tools. Uh, setting timing, when you're making decisions, setting a time limit is really helpful. Even if the time limit doesn't exactly hold, it keeps you all engaged and keep, you don't want to end up in a three hour discussion about something. You don't have enough time. Um, prioritize, uh, set up a, a, some kind of a scheduling, um, and then Roman voting uh, is useful. And actually the last page on here, I put a description of what Roman voting is because quite frankly, until I looked at this, I had no That's exactly what it is. <laughs> So Roman voting is plain and simple. Y'all are discussing something. You're trying to get a sense of the groups. OK, let's do a quick vote. Thumbs up means, yes, I like this idea. Sideways means, I'm not excited about it, but I can live with it if that's the way we go. Thumbs down, I don't like this idea. And you can quickly get a sense of where the group is at. If everybody's thumbs up, decisions made move on. If it's all thumbs up and a couple sides, Decisions made, move on. If you've got some thumbs up and some thumbs down, maybe you need to uh, work a little bit longer to get some consensus here. So that kind of interim voting can move things along pretty quickly uh, to get decisions made. Um, and teams do get hung up on decisions. Um, in particular, uh, people who present their initial ideas are frequently somewhat wedded to their ideas. So you gotta be clever about how you, you know, and they may be wedded to 
some parts of it that are not great parts. So that takes a little cleverness in, in how you uh, loosen them from, an, from their ideas. You're going to design an MVP. Um, and not, is that thing you want to say on this? Because otherwise, I'm going to bounce this page. Okay, we've talked through the weekend in terms of focuses. Day one is really getting organized. You may do some work beyond just getting organized Friday night, but mostly Friday night is, is about getting organized. Day two is your major work day. Day three, you're going to be putting, you're going to be turning your attention to your pitch. So you want to get as far as you can on Saturday. Defining your MVP, um, getting out of the building, going and doing some market research. As I said, don't design surveys. You don't have time to do that. It's not effective at this point. Come up with some questions and, uh, and figure out who's the right people to talk to and then figure out where you can find them. Uh, get, if you're working on a website or an app, make sure those are getting built. One guy last year brought in his, his souped up uh, desktop computer. He had like five CPUs in there and a few dozen gigabytes or terabytes of memory and the whole bit. Uh, so, so hopefully we'll have some cool computer people in here to help us with. Uh, customer validation. Uh, validation is a really key part of this. Validation is about checking out your assumptions about what people want and need and about how your product is going to work. You want to do lots of validation. I helped your pitch at the end. If you can say in your pitch, we validated this by, and you've got a powerful way of, of saying what you did. Day three, there's going to be some more work in the morning completing this, thinking about your rollout strategy, how are we going to implement this business, and then you get into the pitch Sunday afternoon, at least Sunday afternoon, probably even into the morning, you're going to be focusing on getting your pitch done. What makes for successful pitches in this? Practice, practice, practice. Um, there's so much pressure to get work done that people tend to leave and say, so, well, we'll be able to pitch this. And then they get up there and what is it, five minutes to pitch? They get five minutes to pitch, they spend the first four minutes talking about their team and how wonderful the process was and, and what a great day it is and all that and all of a sudden they've got 30 seconds left, they're out of time and they haven't told us a thing about what their product is. That five minutes goes by amazingly fast up there, time managing is, is key, you have to practice to get the timing down. So and the whole, it's pretty good to have either one or two people max present don't do don't, a whole team don't do thing. Don't do a whole team. Business students, we always do whole team things for class. This is not the time to do that. Now, one or two. Find the person that can sell it. Yep. Yep. That's a really good point. I um, also want to say, when you're looking at fans, you might want to create a Facebook page for um, whatever it is your business idea is, and then try to get all your friends to... Um, to like it, that's another way of testing it. And um, we had, and we'll put Facebook. We'll, we'll like all the Facebook uh, pages on um, on our the our Facebook and try to get that out as well. Okay. So we'll try to find ways to to present. Yeah, that's a good point. About Facebook and Twitter are great ways to reach out to people really quickly. And especially if you can get something to go viral. If you can get like 2,000 responses saying, we love this idea, that's really helpful. That's some nice validation. So what are you going to get judged on in your pitch? And we've, got, we've got a panel of really cool uh, judges who will be looking at these on Sunday night. None of the three of us will be on those. We're safe. Okay. They're going to be looking at execution. How, do, how well did you do in getting through this and getting this whole thing done. Did you get an MVP established? Right. Um, do you have a roadmap here for how your pro product got to where it is and where it needs to go from there? Do you have a functional demo? Now, be careful with the, with the demos. Uh, somewhere in here, there's a suggestion 
uh, that's a really important one about um, make sure that you've got the, if you do a demo, that you're not depending on the wireless to make it work. Okay, you, you want to think about uh, mechanical ways to make the demo work. There's probably a better way to say that. What, what would you say about ways to make demos work so you don't get hung up? You don't have, remember you are designing a very, a prototype to test the idea. Don't worry too much about the detail of the, the programming, the network. Make sure the, the wireframe or the, the interface is enough for you to test the market. If you spend a lot of time collecting data, designing a database, that's probably time wasted in this time. You want to look at how the product look and feel. Even if there's no, no code behind it, that's okay. But you need to get the customer to see it, to touch it, say, oh, this is how it might work. So focus on that one. I think we had one, one team a couple, two years ago, that didn't even have a prototype. They just had a website that it basically, they were gonna come up with this great game, space game and they kind of just had the pictures and the idea and stuff like this, but they didn't have time to program it. So they it was kind of like developing a Kickstarter campaign so yeah. that, so I mean, it's like, even if you don't have it that far, if you kind of just sell the idea. And nowadays, the programming is still challenging, but it's become easier and easier. Almost any idea you can generate, the coding part is not the Focus on generating an idea, put together a prototype, the customer even test. Don't spend too much time doing that coding. Those can happen after. Of course, if you can do it in one week, that's even better, but that is not a priority. Okay, so that's the execution side. Business model validation. What have you done to uh, convince the judges that this is real, that people would want this, et cetera? Um, and, 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 and Things like we've had 2,000 Facebook likes in the last hour on this thing, those kinds of things uh, uh, scream, yep, there's some, some validity to this. And then user experience design, um, uh, can you show, how would you explain that one? So if you have, for example, you say PayPal, you have to go through two or three different screens, right? That user experience is that people go link to the one screen they have to put in their username and password, they have to click here to go to the next one to validate, then they got an email to verify. That is the user experience. You want to make sure that process is met. You don't have to design the program to generate those, but you at least have to have that screenshot. You can just design the screen. You have the customer go through the click and click, and actually, well, everyone will go through the same, every customer, you don't have to design the logic, but you need to provide the entire experience to make sure your product is viable. All right, there's some hints there. I'll let you read those hints. I think we've talked about most of them. Um, there's some uh, resources out there, and this gives the URLs to those. I, I will actually, I didn't quite get to it before this meeting, but I will put links to these different videos. I will do that this afternoon up on the, the iLearn site for this course. Uh, so you can look at those. Those are worth looking at. Uh, Steve Blank's a major guy in, in doing this. Um, and there's useful stuff there. And I think that's, that's about it. Yep. So uh, I want to encourage you. So it, it is a learning experience. Very few ideas. But some ideas generate in the startup weekend world eventually get funded and, pr and, and produced. But the idea is that, especially for the, the computer science and uh, communication design students, go into that process and see if you like that chaotic, exciting experience. That will also help you to make decisions. Do I want to for, work for a, a boring university? Or what's F going to start for eight years and sold for two or more billion dollars? So I want you to go through that process, not only, not only to learn how to develop a product, but also experience that that process to see if you want to choose that as your career. Because there are more and more opportunity here, definitely in Silicon Valley, where young people like you, with a few thousand dollars, can produce a product and change the world. It's, it's possible, it's done all the time. So I want you to not only think about this is a product only, think about this is can open up your potential career. And the other thing I want you to also to, to share, 
most business people probably experience this. The connection you built with people different from you will be a key uh, takeaway in this event. So try to open up to talk to for, for technology students to talk to business and vice versa and talk to there will be outside participants. Know as many people as possible. Often they are looking for their future partners or, or employees. Okay. So those connection and a career choice will be a major takeaway other than a project. So, so keep that in mind. Uh, let me give you a, a quick story. What, 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 who's, who's the winner last year? Give you some kind of idea. The winner last year is that a lot of parents, their kids are allergic to certain ingredients, and they will go to the supermarket, buy something, and, and they take home or find out the kid cannot have it. Or even they have it, they have some allergic reaction. So they come out with an app. You, 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 you take a photo of that barcode, and the barcode will tell you what's ingredient, and you already entered the, the allergen that your kids are, are worried about. And whenever you take, take a photo of that barcode, your, your phone will tell you you cannot buy that because it has seafood in it. Okay. And on this, there will be similar product without seafood, and that will be advertising to generate profit. Mm -hmm. So it's a simple idea, but that company, that, that is a, a group of international students, a couple of our students here, and uh, they continue to work on the idea. One of them is funded by the government coming back to Silicon Valley to start a company. Mm -hmm. So it's possible. It's possible. It's a, the app is called What's In. What's In. Yeah, What's In. And what's they ended up coming in second in the uh, uh, Startup Challenge New Venture Competition last year also. Okay. And so I will give you that example. So it's, it could be done. It could be realized. And the final example is Twitter. Idea is very simple. Right? You put a hashtag, and anyone go to the website can see the hashtag. How long does it take them to produce the first functional, complete functional uh, software? People say, oh, maybe five years. No, two weeks. Two weeks, six people they created. From that point on, they kind of take off. So it's possible. So I would encourage you to use this as your stepping stone to think about you might be able to create something that change the world. And donate money back to the university. <laughs> <laughs> That's our real reason for doing it. Well, the other thing is, it's a lot of fun. Yes. I mean, it sounds like a lot of crazy, but we are in, all the work's going to be done in the ballroom, and so the, the creative energy just kind of permeates through the whole ballroom, and everybody is helping one another. You, you, you help one another across themes, too. Um, so it's... Um, so enjoy the process, open up to anyone, especially you think I will never talk to that type of person. That's a person you probably should <laughs> talk to. <laughs> um, a couple last things before I open it up for uh, any people who want to come up and practice a pitch. Um, make sure you bring your laptops. It should be obvious, but just in case you're thinking, wow, they're like, yeah, you want your laptop. Um, uh, and bring your IDs for Sunday evening for Beer Fest, just in case we have to check IDs. Especially you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I'd love to see everybody get up there and pitch Friday night. Um, Carl, but you've got time to come up with that. Idea. 60 seconds. It's not a long time. It's not a long time. The, the model I have is that. The, the, the pathway, the, 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 the strategy to generate the best idea is to generate a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's the best thing. Absolutely. Okay. And the best way to find your idea is to stand up here and open your mouth and <laughs> see what comes out. Who would like to? No, I don't want to. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to jump right into it. No, I was going to ask you if you could do an example pitch because I want to hear an example pitch. Dan, go for it. Oh, okay. You just saved my butt. <laughs> <laughs>